G'day and welcome to part 33 on the XC restoration. It's only taken me five months to get this out. I think the last video I did was in May. So I didn't want to do it in the winter. Really didn't want to do it. So I did the motorbike and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, the problem with that though is it's taken me, I've been out a few times today. Um, I sort of got back in my garage kit and come back in here, but I've I've actually spent a good deal of time just reacquainting myself with the job, what I was up to, what I needed to do, what parts I need, that sort of thing. I've actually got quite a lot of stuff here that I can do on it without um, sort of buying anything else. I need a corking gun though. I wanted to put those vent pods in because that's what I need to put in first before the headlining. Um, and the headlining needs to go in before I put the fuel tank in because I need to stand in the boot. And the fuel tank needs to go in, then I'll do the, um, <laughs> the boot lid and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot to do. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Today I spent a good deal of time on the shifter. Um, as I said, some of that when I, I think the first bit says, um, I came into work earlier this morning. That was like four months ago. But um, we spent a bit of time on the shift to get that sorted out. And the back doors, we drag out from under the house. They're covered in dust and mud and all this sort of stuff. We give them a good clean, pull them apart and sort of um, assess what we're up to with them. The problem with the doors and the boot on this car is they're full of blisters, humidity blisters. Um, and they have to go back to bare metal just so we know exactly what's underneath because anything like a humidity bubble or crazy, anything like that, Paint's not stable, you cannot do anything with that. You can't paint over it, you wouldn't dare. So I have to go all back to bare metal and we, we start again with them. Like we did on the XW, that whole car. I think we pulled the whole thing down to bare metal on that. We did. Yes, we did, because the whole thing was painted in enamel. And it was all dull and crazed and it was a mess. So this is sort of the same, this one. A lot of this car's been back to bare metal. Um, there's a few areas, areas I didn't take back because the paint was stable, it was fine. And... Um, there was no point. So today we look at the back doors and the shifter. I'm sorry it's taken so long. A lot of people have been asking about the XC restoration when we're getting back into it. I said spring. We're now halfway through spring, so it's taken a little while. But um, we're, we're now ready to get back in. Now, having said that, the next video in about a week is Dave's bike. We have the engine behind me all cleaned up. I've got to paint it and stick that in. And of course, there's other parts waiting for that. So the next video, we'll, we'll put the engine for the bike in. Um, got a new piston, new um, home the cylinder, do all that sort of stuff. And then the one after that will be either on the MG or the XC, one of the two. I'm waiting on a lot of plating for the MG. Um, I'm going to go down to the plater tomorrow because I found a whole lot of other stuff on the XC's doors I need to get done, which I've forgotten about. So not too smart, am I? So that's all got to get done too. So we're just doing three jobs at once. It's all good, it's happy, it's stress-free. Um, at the end of the day, it, it's it's really good, provided I can do these jobs when I want to do them. It, it's stressful when you have to do them by a given date, um, or people say, I want to see this, and you think, oh, you, you sort of do it when you're ready to do it, and it, it, it stays fun, you know. That's why it's taken a little while to get back into this, but we're ready now, so I do hope you enjoy. Right, so let's talk a little bit about gear shifters after I've had some tea. All right, <clears throat> so oops, I went into work bright and early this morning to start hacking into this thing. Now, what we had originally is this, I'll just bang it back together like that. That went over there and the spring went there and there's of course a circlip that sort of goes down here on the shaft as well. Now, what happened, or at least what this was, was it had a bell, a steel bell coming down to where you can see that little bit of brazing there. So the shifter was only about that long. Now, that's absolutely no good because it means that it's been shortened by about 130 millimeters and the knob would be buried in the boot somewhere in the console, which isn't the look I wanted and that's not how I wanted it to be. And even if I did, it would never have worked because the thread on this nylon nut here is absolutely munted. So, we have to get this off. Now what happened was somebody has sectioned it and they've taken out um, 130 millimeters and welded this part here onto the top of the bell. Now I think originally there was supposed to be some sort of, it was double skinned. There was an inner part that sort of went over here and an outer one with some sort of filling in it to sort of act as a, a cushion effect if, if you like when you're changing gear. Now I couldn't salvage that. 
Now what I did notice was that this has only been this has been welded to the top of that bell, and the bell was then filled with braze at the bottom. Um, I would imagine once they welded this on, it would have been heated up significantly, would have burnt out the rubber inside or whatever that was in there, and made it a little bit loose. So of course it filled it in with the brazing material, which is useless. Now I need to change this nut here, and I'll get no aluminium one. Okay, because as I said, the threads are no good. I can't do anything with it. I wish I had a rag here. I'm all oily. And so what I've done, and I'll show you some footage for that, because I did it before work this morning, is I've made an extension. I'm just machining down the shaft of the gear thing, the um, gear shift, if you like, and it flares out to go over here, and it has to be a sort of an interference fit. And what I'll also do is um, bang a couple of three millimeter holes and put roll pins in there so that that can be knocked out and this can be detached again if for some reason we need to get to any of these other components in the future, which is unlikely, but you know. I'd like to have threaded this. Um, you can see I've cut there a little bit. I'd like to thread it, but that appears to be hardened, so I can't really do that. But I think an interference fit with roll pins is gonna be all right. So what that means, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at this. I don't know what thread that is. It looks like it could be metric, I'm not sure. It doesn't matter, I can emulate that. I can cut another thread um, a machine up in the bit of uh, stock that I've used. I've just used bright steel stock out of a um, scrap spin, just a little piece. And of course we can do that. But I don't want to get a new one of these. One, because I don't want to get stooged on eBay for 300 bucks for a shifter. Uh, and secondly, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. And I can also dial up the length I want. So I'll do it to where I think it is, which is the other, as I said, 130 mil. Um, I measured that off one at Ray's workshop. But I've also wanted to get rid of all this stuff and see what was left on the shaft, just so I know what the trajectory is. So if I join something onto there, I can sort of pretty much back in that it's gonna be straight up. Um, but that's where we are with that at the moment. So I need to order a couple of parts. I need to order the proper um, modified, uh, what do you call it? Oh, this thing, um, <laughs> nut. Um, this was crimped around the sides, which they all are, and it had a like a Jubilee clip that was knocked in exactly to the contour of the top of the gearbox shifting mechanism and it was tightened right up so it was never going to be any good and of course once that was sort of screwed in changed gear once and it just flew out again so it's, it's useless I can't use that and I'm not even tempted to so once I get that then I can sort of put it on and then fit the rest of the shifter to it but I think that's probably the best way to go um, just on account of the fact that these are quite dear for a Falcon one they're different between Falcons and Cortinas I believe um, and we can we can make a really good repair without spending stupid money just by having access to a lathe and a you know a bit of scrap bright steel stock right I don't know if I'm oh it's focused now good right well I've come into work early and I'm going to do something about the shifter now it's been welded up here which I don't like at all and in doing that they've sort of welded this bell on I think that's just a support for the for the gear shift. Um, also, it might be some sort of shock absorber. I'm gonna cut all this off. And I'm gonna cut it off up here to try and leave some of that original material there um, so I can put the new one on, the gear shift extension on to the right trajectory, if you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna dock that off now and we'll start making up a new one. This is a mess. It's all been sort of brazed inside. Um, this is the outer shell that I've just cut off here. And the original spigot is sort of in there, and I need to get that off. Someone's brazed this all up, so I'm going to cut this whole thing off. The bottom of the shift is really good and positive, but I want to change this nut too for an aluminium one. So look at this. We've got <laughs> this bed to break out. Um, and that's cool. So I can just take those bits off. You have to keep them in order. And um, start working on this part here. So we've got a bit of bright steel out of the scrap spin. I'm just going to start by drilling a, a small hole in the bottom of the centering bit and follow it up with a pilot hole. Whenever you use a larger or you want to drill a larger hole, always start with a pilot drill. Right, so under my house, there are the front doors and there's a starlit tailgate next to them. I've actually taken the back doors out. Um, and you can see I've started painting the tops of the front doors. At the same time, I painted the house. So, I hope you like that. It's not quite the right colour, 
but I reckon you know I need to sort of improve the coverage here as well and I've sort of painted them into the house as well so I hope you appreciate that but here at the back doors Jan came out yesterday and it rained not a big deal so I think the first thing we'll do is pop a glass out and window regs we're putting electric windows in this car and the hinges are going to need rebuilding because they're knackered and the detents all gone there we can get spring rebuilding kits so we'll pop those off and take the insides out take those quarter windows out and give them a bit of a wash i don't remember this rust god this is a i really don't like doing this this is the one thing about car resto stuff i really don't like this is all full of blisters all that paint has to come off these look like the original hinges though, they're the smooth cream, smooth cream, sweet cream, um, that the car was originally painted. And you know what also sucks, I took another load of um, stuff to the, hot, to the platers for the motorbikes. And also my brother's MGC, and I should have popped them in, I forgot about these. That hinge doesn't look too bad, it's still got a spring and everything. I wonder how... That one's probably alright. might run down and see if I can put these fasteners in the box because the cleaning joint is really behind with their work. It was going to take a fortnight to, um, to get through all the work they've got. Pop the window rig out. narrow in the bailey strip in this part here and the rest of the door from memory Spray painted duct tape and it divulges this stuff and whoever at Ford decides to use, it, use this needs to smack in the chops because they've wrecked more clothes. <laughs> it is just the pits this stuff. Um, I don't know what's wrong with the domestic type sealer but they've used this and it stays wet and gluey and it's just revolting stuff. No, no, no. No, 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 it's going. I think it's going. I'm trying to get this window out and I've managed to shift it. I'm sort of standing on there and I've managed to shift it, but I'm trying to salvage the bloody rubber. Ooh. Maybe if I can get the glass out, which I sort of have. It's the truth. What's going on here? Come on, out. What are you doing? Here we go. Yeah, if I can flip that over. If I break this, I'm going to be so pissed off. Get on that. Oh. Cheers. Alright, I think I can do this on the trestle now. I'll work the rest out in a minute. Right, so I'm just cutting in here. I better remember to edit that out. Imagine if someone heard that. Um, I've got a hunch I'm going to be getting a new one because this isn't going to give it up too easily. Don't you love it when they paint around the door seals? Stupid. Absolutely silly. Oh, I need to sneeze. <laughs> Shut up! I can't sneeze. Alright, so I'm trying to sneeze and he stopped me sneezing. You know when you're just winding up with a sneeze and you're about to let it go and start when someone starts making jokes? Right, so we've got these bits here. They're for the door trims. I just use a spatula just to knock the tops off. 
because you can get new ones of these. They make repro ones. I think I've got a million of them here anyway, but the fact that they've been painted underneath is a pain to me. I'm not interested. So that's the best way of getting those off. I use the same thing to get rid of this all, you know, that horrible stuff that Ford use. This stuff here. This isn't too bad because it's been dirty for a long time, so it's sort of taken some of the elasticity and what do you call it? stickiness out of it, I guess. But um, bloody horrible stuff. Got a all chance getting that off. Right, so we found this in the door, and the best cold beer is Vic. And let's have a bit of a look in here. It is, I can't see with daylight, hang on. It looks absolutely lovely in there. Um, that I'll treat. I'll wire brush that out, put a bit of phosphoric in it. There's no way in a pink fit I'm lifting this and going underneath it. There will be surface rust under there, but it doesn't look significant enough to have to cut. So that's one out of four. Okay, so in the door. That's a side intrusion bar. That's the law in Australia. That's why some Japanese cars are really, really expensive to get ADI'd because they don't have that side intrusion bar. It looks squeaky in there. Much nicer on the inside than it is on the outside. Very, very happy indeed with that. That's cool. Well, we've got two lovely clean up doors there. We'll let them dry out. And when we get our paint stripper, we'll take all the paint off and prepare them to be painted. Of course, once they're painted, they go straight back on the car. To be quite honest, I'm having a few memory issues with this. I made this shifter, um, and I made it some time ago, months and months ago, I think I made it back in May, and broke a drill bit in here, and I managed to get that out, which I've just dropped it in. There it is there. And I bought half a dozen roll pins, and I can't remember what I've done with the rest of them. It's sturdy. That's a really um, tight fit. Well, it's not tight. You can take that roll pin out and that'll come out, which I wanted to do for fitting this um, new nut. Here's the old one, which has got the nylon thread that always flogs out. And it had a big uh, Jubilee clamp holding that to the top of the gearbox. So it was literally held on by a Jubilee clamp. And, of course, it's got this spring. And that was the old shifter thing that was down here somewhere was actually right down there like that. So I've cut that, measured somebody else's, I think Andy's or someone, I can't remember, and made this shifter here. Now, I've turned the end of it so we can fit our nice gear knob on, our single rail gearbox, um, knob, sorry, with the single rail pattern, I should say. That's a top loaded shaped one. Very few cars would have had that from factory. I'm assuming some Cortinas and some XB Falcons. It would have only been reproduced because of the GTs of that period, I would think, because they stopped using top loaders at some point. But anyway, we've got this. And these come with their own set of precautions as well. That's the circlip, which goes here, over the spring, so we're good. And it's got the nylon bush and the steel thread. That is steel, it's not aluminium. And some people swear, in fact, the people that sell these will say, do not use an aluminium or steel one, because it will flog out the casing on the gearbox it will flog that thread out but having said that i do know somebody with a cortina who said that they kept putting these in and they just failed the whole time you get a few years out of them and they just pull out so we've gone this way instead which is the aftermarket and of course that needs to go sort of down <laughs> well thank god for that it fits um over there i think is it tapered or not? Hang on, let me just turn this around. I'm not actually sure. I've got to rethink a lot of what I'm doing. I think that presses over there. Yes, it does. And of course, the nut has that turn bit in there, which will bolt up to the gearbox and it will give it some friction, I assume. So that goes there. Rightio, so this thing here seems to have an issue because when I put it on, it is showing a crack which is pathetic because it's brand new. I didn't force it, I just used like hand pressure. So I'm wondering perhaps if it's better to use the original one. Now that does slide in there 
very, very well and moves about the way it should. And it also goes exactly the way it's supposed to go there. So I'm thinking perhaps that is the best way to go. That's just fine. Or actually, is it fine? Yeah, that's fine. I reckon we just go with that. What do you think? What do you think? I think the first thing to do, regardless, is to run this thread into the um, housing on the gearbox, just to make sure it starts nice and easily, because there's going to be resistance when you go to put that in. Um, so far as these are concerned, that sits on top, then that goes there. So that's the way it goes. So with that in mind, do we use that or not? I don't know how the pinch... I'm assuming we have to use that on here as well. Whatever the case, if it does make that too much higher, the height of it, um, it's just going to put more pressure on the spring, which means reverse detent will be better. So I might put that on there, that there, then the spring, then da 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 da, da. Do you know what I mean? So I think to begin with, what we'll do is we'll just try this in the gearbox housing, um, just to make sure that threads properly, and take it from there, then we can put the shifter in. Okay, so we're in the car now, and you can see how much mess is here, of course. That's the Plymouth's window, and I've got a horrible feeling I've cracked it. I forgot it was there and lent on it the other day. Anyway, we just want to check this, this thread, and it's all good. And just particularly that it starts easily. Yeah, that's cool. All right then, so we can go and get the shifter and um, pop it in, I guess. Right, so I've got this on. This is a split bush. I thought it was cracked. I thought it was faulty, but it's actually an intentional cut. It's all sort of shiny in there. I wanted to use the original one, but there's a little bit of slop in it, and I want to get rid of slop. I don't like that. Um, so I've sort of married it up so that the split is over with fourth, where um, third and fourth is because it's the least amount of pressure you put on. Of course, when you go to reverse, I didn't want it this side and between first and second, or at least through the gates. I didn't want it on sort of that side either, so... We need to lubricate it quite carefully. Um, so we need to lubricate it. Pop a bit of grease around here so I can just fly around inside the socket in the nut. And um, we don't need to be overzealous with this, but just enough to sort of lubricate it, let it be nice and free. Um, yeah, there we go. She'll be right. That's what all those Aussies say. She'll be right. Okay, and then we just lubricate the bottom quite carefully, like that, and stick it in, if I can remember where the bloody hell it goes. Where's the crack? It's over there. All right, then. Should I put that socket on first? Maybe not. Can't see what I'm bloody doing. I think that's it there. Hang on. I'm just going to stick my foot in here. Pop this back on. Stick it there. And get this nut. And you would probably put the bush in the nut first, but I'm not going to because I want to be able to start this freely. That will push it in by itself. Yep, that feels pretty darn good. So let's tighten him up. And I'm using this diabolically massive shifter, which my father bought. How the hell is that turn around? That bush is turned around. Oh, let's turn around with this. My father bought for my brother with his first car in Austin Freeway, which was seized. John, I think, was 16. I was 11. That was the car that got me into, well, cars. Now, let me just feel this. Probably not a bad idea. That feels nice. Fourth. So that's reverse. You can hear reverse. First, second, third, fourth. Lovely. All right. So let's put this spring on. See if that, because at the moment that's neutral. Straight and reverse. So let's see if we can fix that up. You do gigs like this, and it just makes you want to do more. I couldn't stop when I was doing the um, wiring. And I looked down here, let's move his light. It's all, I can't see, can you? It's all shiny and new under there. How cool is that? It's lovely. Oh dear. I don't know what that is. 
My father-in-law had that in his garage. When he died, I took it. I think it's like a pointing stick for lecturing and that sort of thing. Anyway, let's go back to where we were. Right, so I've cleaned this up here. And I'll just stick a bit of sleep on the inside. I don't even know you're supposed to, but, well, I'm going to do it because I can. And stick that there so it can slide on top of that dome. This one here is a bit dirty and grotty. This is the spring saddle for the lockout spring thing. Um, we're getting closer, guys. The trouble is with me is when I look at something like this, I get all excited about it and then concentrate on it and forget everything else. Do you know what I mean? It's the same with every job I do. That needs to go there. Actually, I need to put some grease on that too, I think. I don't know. We're just going to grease everything, eh? I won't grease the upholstery, though. I don't like slippery seats. Here we go. Oh, stuff it. She'll be right. Right. Then we can push that down, and it goes on there. So, now's the bit where the spring can fly off, and bad language is going to gush out of my mouth. So, then we need to edit it out. Because that goes over. Oh, shit. Don't say it doesn't fit. Oh, yes, it does. Thankfully, I thought I was in trouble. I thought it wasn't going to fit. And then we put this spring in. Um, okay, hand's got to go under the tripod. And that has to go there. And is that in? Oh, what good is that bloody thing? Okay. That's going over to reverse a little bit too easy. It's locking out a bit. It's not perfect. It should jump up. Anyway, I can sort that out later. I'm not even fussed too much about that. But just sort of looking, that's really, really good. They've got a lovely shifter single rail. That's really good. Um, and of course, the box goes on. The box is underneath that. Oh no, the box is next to the camera. Need to clean that up. That can all get mounted on. <laughs> Dirty this is. Uh, and of course, there's a boot that goes there, but the piastre resistance with this is this really lovely single rail knob. I was going to get a top. Well, it's called Top Loader 1, which got the reverse down there and try and modify it, but I'll never have been able to do it this well. The only thing that worries me... Can I move this seat forward? No, I don't think I can. The only thing that worries me is it's made with just a bit of fuel hose shoehorn, shoehorned into the base of it. And I've got visions of that splitting. Now, I cut that thread to 10 by one5 which is a metric thread, with the same size shoulder at the top, and I rounded it off so that we can sort of stick it over, but it's really stiff. I just don't want to damage that. Um... I'm petrified about it, actually. So I thought maybe putting a bit of rubber grease. This is castor oil-based grease, which um, is probably seen as what the hell are you doing putting on there. But it might um, just prevent the... Let it turn a bit easier, if you know what I mean. Maybe a bit on the threads, do you think? Um, because I really don't want to break this. This is dearer. The top loaded ones retail like I think twenty nine bucks. This was like forty five dollars. But you know, for the look I'm after, it it's actually worth every cent. Now if I push that on, is that going to even go down? I mean, is it going down? It's awfully bloody tight. Is it too high as well? I think it's the right height. It does look very high the way it is now. I don't think these were ever that low. Jeez, that feels awful. I just don't want to break this. Hmm. Food for thought. Food for thought. The car's rolling. But you get the picture. You get the picture. Let me just take the camera off and show you. Now, I've still got to find the other roll pin to stick in there. It does look very, very long. If you look at it like that, it's huge. The, I think it's the right length, though, from a measurement I made. But whatever the case, if it is too long, um, it's very easy to sort of knock the roll pins out and stick it back in the lathe and turn it down further and re-thread it down further. Uh, whatever the case, that will be significantly reduced, that sort of length. By the time you get your box in, um, your carpet's in, your console sitting on top, and your shift boot, it's going to come right up here somewhere. So I think it's going to be fine. But if it's not, it's a very easy modification to make. So there we have it. I don't know what the story is with reverse. It's sort of lying back. 
There's not much of a lock out there. Can't wait to drive this thing. Such a cool car. So I reckon it's going to do for now. In the next video, I think what we'll do, um, don't like that. I've got to suss this out. Not convinced that that's right. I've got greasy hands. Is that clean? Sort of moderately clean, isn't it? Right, in the next video, we'll put this box on and what else do I need to do? I'm going to put those pods in the back, those vent pods, which are in the C pillar over there behind that um, interior light, or uh, sort of underneath it to the rear. And then I reckon we gear up to stick the headlining in. And uh, once the headlining's in, things are going to look much, much better. We can really start moving with this car now. I was going to get that window out. Anyway, whatever the case, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Please drive safely, enjoy your classic, and I'll see you later.